He's empowered his church with everything we need to reach our lost world. He's given us all the tools we need to make a difference in this city, in this county, in this region. Aren't you thankful for that tonight? You've got the weapons. You've got the equipment. You've got the power. You've got the authority. First of all, we have his blood. Aren't you thankful for the blood of Jesus Christ? Aren't you glad you were baptized in Jesus' name? for the remission of your sins. And when you were baptized in Jesus' name, that blood was applied to your life. That blood covers your sins. That, cover, that blood washes you and cleanses you. I'm thankful for the blood of Jesus Christ tonight because it still works in 2022. Hallelujah. And then he's given us his name. And again, his name is applied to our lives. We take on the family name when we're baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of our sins and we become part of that family, part of the family of God. And I'm thankful for the name of Jesus. Do you believe there's still power in the name of Jesus? When you're in trouble, do you still call on the name of Jesus? When you need help, do you say Jesus? When you're in trouble, do you say in Jesus' name? When you're sick, do you pray for that person in Jesus' name? There is power in the name of Jesus. And then he's filled us with his spirit. How many of you here have the Holy Ghost? How many of you has he filled with the baptism of the spirit? And when you received it, you spoke in other tongues as the spirit gave the utterance. I'm thankful for the Holy Ghost tonight. I'm thankful for the power of God tonight because it's not by might, it's not by power, but he said it's by my spirit saith the Lord. And so we've got that power, that force that is unparalleled in the world in which we live, and that is the Holy Ghost. And then we have the instruction manual, the Word of God, how, the how-to manual that tells us how to get the job done. And whatever your question is, look in the Word of God and you will find the principle that applies to your particular challenge or issue and you can find the answer from the Lord exactly how He would have us to do these things and the Word is powerful. It's quicker than any two-edged sword piercing even to dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and the Bible says it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And even tonight as the word is going forth, it's doing things that I'm not able to do, Pastor. It's doing things that nothing, no one else can do because it's t getting into your heart and it's touching you and it's speaking. And I actually believe we underestimate the power of the word of God. When we speak the word of God, something happens. We may not be able to see it with our natural eye, but God is working through his word. His word is anointed anointed already and we've prayed and asked him to anoint our hearts and our ears and our minds tonight that we might receive the word of God and when I look at those tools it seems like there's really only one thing missing and that is boldness kingdom boldness to use the tools that God has given us because again, he's equipped us with everything we need. He would not send us into battle under-equipped. He would not send us into battle without everything we need to get the job done. But it seems to me the one thing that many times we are missing is the boldness to use those weapons every day. The boldness to, to activate those pieces of equipment and weaponry every single day we need the Lord to baptize us somebody say baptize we need the Lord to baptize us tonight with holy boldness so we would be bold as a lion so we would be unflinching in the face of danger so we would not be afraid we would not bat an eye as we step into situations we've never faced before as we would step into a culture we would step into a society that many times hates what we're saying but we know this is the only thing that's going to fix the problem we have the only answer we have the only antidote to the issues of our day and that's Jesus Christ would you put your hands together and give him some praise tonight because Jesus is truly our answer 
In the text, he said, the wicked flee when no man pursueth. And so if you really break that down, what he's saying is the wicked, they're afraid even if there's not an enemy. It's like, I think I might have heard something. I think I might have seen something. It doesn't even have to be real. It can be imagined. And there's a lot of fearful people in our world today. Matter of fact, I'm not sure, at least in my lifetime, that I've ever seen as much fear in the society, in the culture that we live today. Because people are fearful, and yet the writer says, the righteous. And I believe this room is filled with righteous people, Pastor. I believe there's righteous people at Christian Growth Center. I believe there's righteous people that are here on a Tuesday night that have come to the house of God in the middle of summer, and you've come to receive something from the Lord. You've come to give him praise and worship and adoration, but you also have come saying, Lord, give me what I need for this next week. Give me what I need for the next month, Lord. You know exactly where I'm lacking, and I want to make room for you tonight. I want to create a void so you you can fill me tonight and fill me with that boldness because your word says the righteous are bold as a lion. The scripture tells us just a couple of chapters later, Proverbs 30, 30, that the lion is the strongest of all the beasts of the field. And when we think of a lion, we think of something that is courageous something that's bold, something that's unafraid of anything and never steps away from danger, never steps away from a foe or an enemy, never steps away from a challenge because lions are just symbols of courage and power. And my Bible tells me in the book of Revelation that our God is the lion of the tribe of Judah and if the lion of the tribe of Judah is on our side tonight, can I tell you, there's nothing for us to be afraid of. There's nothing for us to be frightened. There's nothing for us to be ducking our head about because we are the church. And our God is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And he's got all power in heaven and in earth. And there should be nothing that we would be afraid of. We might not understand what's going on. We might not understand all the answers. Because every day we're being faced with questions we've never been faced before. How do we deal with this? I know as a pastor it's like, wow, this is a new one. We're living a new day where there's questions that we've never had before. Because our world is so messed up. But I'm here to tell all of us and remind us tonight, we can be bold in the face of that. And the truth is, if there's no sin and shame in our life, there is no reason to fear. There's no reason to be afraid. And so if you're afraid tonight, if you're fearful tonight, it's time to check yourself. Is there sin in your life? Or is there shame in your life? If there's sin in your life, you need to take care of that tonight in Jesus' name. Before we dismiss, God's going to give you the opportunity to take care of it. If there's shame in your life, he can start the healing process and deliverance of that shame tonight as well. Because I found that there's many apostolic people that are suffering from shame. Many apostolic people have been filled with the same Holy Ghost that we all have. And yet they're paralyzed by shame. Can I tell you, God doesn't want us to be paralyzed by shame? Hallelujah. His word tells us in Joel chapter 2, my people shall never be ashamed. And so it's not his will for us to be ashamed. It's his will for us to be bold and to be bold as a lion. Now the first miracle in the New Testament church occurred in Acts chapter 3. When we go back to Acts chapter 2, we know that 120 were filled with the Holy Ghost in that upper room. And then Peter boldly preached that message to that crowd. And he told them, he looked them eyeball to eyeball and told them, you crucified your Messiah. That was a pretty bold declaration, wouldn't you say? I mean, he's telling them, you're murderers. I mean, this is the same guy that it's not been too many days before this that he said, I'm never going to deny you. And then he denies the Lord three times. 
And so here he is boldly declaring that, and the result of his boldness, 3,000 people were filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost on that day of Pentecost. Somebody said amen to that. Yeah. And then Acts chapter 3 was the miracle demonstration, the first miracle of the church. Peter and John are on their way to church. They're on their way to prayer meeting. And by the way, it's always good to be on your way to prayer meeting. If you haven't been on your way to prayer meeting in a while, well, there you go. If you're wondering why you don't have the power that you should have, there you go. If you're wondering why you're afraid to witness, there you go. This is not hard. This is not rocket science. And so Peter and John are on their way to prayer, and here's the lame man at Gate Beautiful. They passed him many times before. I kind of imagine they even knew his name. And I kind of imagine that they come and they see him, but something's different this time. Because this is Acts chapter 3. This is following the day of Pentecost. And now Peter and John have the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost gives you boldness to witness, boldness to speak, boldness to declare, boldness to be involved in the demonstration of the Holy Ghost. And so this particular day, Peter looks at him and says, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he doesn't just stand there and wait for something to happen. He's got such bold faith, he grabs the man by the hand, he lifts him to his feet, and as he's doing that, the man's feet and ankle bones receive strength, he gets a little jump and a little leap and starts jumping and leaping and running. And he runs into the prayer meeting at that's going on in the church, and it blows up the prayer meeting. Everybody's going, oh, my goodness. Am I really seeing this? That's the guy that's been parked outside the door for all this time. That's the guy. Wow, this is awesome. This is wonderful. The Bible says they were all in amazement. Because God had answered prayer. And so we're thankful for that miracle that took place at Gay Beautiful in Acts chapter 3. But I want to submit something tonight. If it had not been for boldness, the lame man would still be laying outside the gate. Beautiful. And that truly, you may not like this, but I'll just say, this is what I've done before. And that'll make you feel better. I've seen people in that situation before. It's like, how you doing, brother? How's your day? Man, man, my heart goes out to you. I feel for you, brother. You know what? We're praying for you. We're going to put you on our prayer chain. Matter of fact, I'm going to text your name right now. And we're going to put your name on our PowerPoint screen. For prayer and if it's God's will he's gonna heal you well gotta run on into prayer see you later I'm not gonna ask you if that's ever been you before but I'll raise both hands and tell you it's been me before but can I tell you that's not God's will for his church that's not why he gave us the power that he gave us that's not why his word says if you're a believer Believers will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. What are you saying? We've got to be bold. We've got power. We've got authority. We've got the word of God. And we're living in a world that needs everything God's given us. And we've got to be bold about it and not walk past and leave the lame man laying outside the city. There's no boldness. There's no miracle. And when I say that, I feel a great deal of conviction in my spirit about how many times I've been the guy that walked past the lame man and the lame man was still lame. Rather than me saying, you know, I'm going to believe it's God's will to heal you today. And I'm going to pray and leave it in the hands of God what he does. But I'm going to operate from the assumption today is your day. I'm going to operate from the assumption you've given me power. He's got a need. He's got the answer. I'm the connecting point. 
and he's going to use me to bring about the miraculous. Because there's more to the story than that. The story doesn't end there. Because now, suddenly, there's thousands of people that are curious. There's a captive audience, Pastor, that's created a platform for Peter and John to teach a Bible study, to preach Jesus. And so now everybody's saying, how did this happen? This is amazing. This is awesome. This is wonderful. How did those guys do that? And so Peter begins to preach to them Jesus. He preaches the gospel to them in Acts chapter 3. And Acts chapter 4 begins by telling us that 5,000 men were believers. There was a 5,000 soul harvest as a result of one miracle, one act of holy boldness, one time that one person stepped out and said, I'm going to exercise kingdom boldness and just see what Jesus will do. I'm talking about a 5,000 soul revival. I'm talking about bigger than the day of Pentecost. It took a little boldness. And oh, by the way, that's just the men. So there was a whole bunch more than just the 5,000. What a great miracle. Could it be that person that you're walking by is the beginning of a 5,000 soul revival for this church? It happened there in the Bible. Jesus said, greater things than these shall ye do. I mean, I've got that kind of faith. How about you? Is that God's will or not? Yes or no? Well, of course it is. And so we recognize that tonight because the holiness brings boldness. Our boldness brings about the miraculous. Now, I have to, for full disclosure, they didn't receive a gold star for that miracle. They didn't receive the keys to the city. But they received a jail cell. And they were thrown in prison. And the next day, they're called on the carpet before the religious leaders and they're asking them, by what name or power did you do this? And Acts 4 and 12, neither is there salvation in any other. For there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. We love that verse, don't we? And that was their defense from being thrown in jail. And the religious leaders, I love this story so much. Because they're scratching their head, Pastor. They don't know what to do. What do we do with these guys? Because this is what the Bible says. Indeed, a notable miracle has taken place. We can't deny. Can I tell you what? When God does the miraculous, even the naysayers cannot deny the miracle. Even the critics cannot deny the miracle. Even the atheists cannot deny the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost. And so these guys, they say, we don't really know what to do with them. And so I love this. It's so funny to me. So they tell them, would you please, pretty please, not tell anybody what happened? And I love what Peter said. And this is my own version of the Bible, by the way. You won't find this in yours. What he said was, fat chance that's going to happen. Now, the King James says it a little more delicately than that. And it says, you know, we cannot speak of those things we've seen and heard. In other words, how can we keep silent? And so they put some stripes on their backs and sent them away. But the story's still not over. Because now they go back to their camp. They come back to Tuesday night church where their brethren are. And they say, get up and testify about what happened. Tell us what happened at Gate Beautiful. And so they get up and tell the story. And, and they tell about being beat. And they tell about being threatened. And the church is cheering. The church is praying. And so they have a little prayer meeting right there. And this is what the Bible says their prayer was. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings. And can I just take a time out and say, most of us have probably never been threatened for our witness yet. I'm not a doomsday guy. As a matter of fact, I'm Mr. Optimistic. But the reality in me believes that before Jesus comes, there's a very good chance that you and me are going to be threatened. Don't preach about that Jesus anymore. No more of this praying for the sick anymore. If you do that, this is what's going to happen. 
If you do that, this is what we're going to do. We're going to take away your tax exempt status. We're going to do impose all kinds of things on you. And so I don't know what the future holds, but I do know this. If we're really going to be bold, then we got to get ready to be threatened. And when we get threatened, we need to pray a prayer just like they prayed in Acts chapter 4. They said, grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word by faith stretching forth thine hand to heal, because they believed that healing was key. And then they went on to say, then that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. Because what caused the 5,000 soul revival? The miracle at the gate. And I personally believe the reason this is in the Bible. I believe it is a model. I believe it's a pattern for end time evangelism. Because we live in a world that if you just ask somebody for a Bible study, many times they're pretty cynical. They don't believe the Bible. Am I telling the truth? And they're going, oh, I'm not interested in that. But you know, once the supernatural is unleashed, and once the miraculous has happened, and now people are curious, and there's a platform, they're hungry for truth. And they want to receive it. And Peter and John and the rest, they realize we've got to have the miraculous. And the miraculous will open doors and create a platform so we can reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ because they can't deny the miracle and they want to know how it happened and in what name it happened. And that's when we teach the Bible study. That's when we share the plan of salvation. And they experience the plan of salvation when we go bold. Because it may sound a little tacky, and if it offends you, then I'll apologize after service. But we need to either go bold or go home. I mean it. I'm talking to myself. We can't afford anymore in these last days to be all nice and pretty and be quiet right inside these four walls. We can all be really bold inside these four walls, can't we? We can make some pretty, pretty strong statements. But remember, the miracle took, side out, took place outside the four walls. The layman was outside the four walls. The people that are broken and hurting in this community are outside these four walls. They're on your job, they're in your neighborhood, they're in your schools, they're at the grocery store, they're at the bank. And so we're looking for them. So we can minister to them. And so they're praying for boldness. God, give us boldness. And by the way, Acts chapter 4 is the boldness chapter of the Bible. The Bible talks more about boldness in this chapter than anywhere else. And so what we need to pray tonight for is an impartation of holy boldness. Every one of us. Now, I'm a pretty shy guy by nature. Growing up, I was Mr. Wallflower. No one ever heard a peep from me. But you know, Jesus is not allowing me to be like that. And so at some point, Jesus had to deliver me from myself and say, okay, you can be shy and all that other business, but my word says to be a witness. My word says to let your light shine. And you can't hide behind some personality kind of thing. You've got to get the word out and you've got to be who I've called you to be. You've got to be bold as a lion. So there's four areas that I believe that we as a church, we need to focus on being bold. The first one is, we've got to have a bold witness and a bold testimony. There's nothing more powerful than your testimony. Some of you don't believe that. There's nothing more powerful than your testimony. You're the expert on your testimony. No one can deny what Jesus has done for you. They might say, I disagree with your interpretation of that verse of the Bible, but it's your story. And every person in this room has got a story. Whether you grew up on a church pew or whether you've been in the church two weeks and been delivered from everything out in the world, every one of us have a testimony. And we've got to be bold about sharing that testimony. Before we leave our house every morning, we should pray, God, give me divine appointments today. When's going to be the person? Who's going to be the person that I'm going to run into? And I'm going to feel that check of the Holy Ghost, that little nudge that says, this is what you prayed for. And you begin to share with them what Jesus Christ has done for you. we got to be bold about it. Our world needs to hear your testimony. Your neighborhood needs to hear your testimony. 
and we've got to get really good at it. Can I give you a homework assignment on Tuesday night? Is that okay, Pastor? I won't get in trouble? Okay. Write your testimony down. Yeah, I really said that. Sometime in the next week, before next Tuesday night, so you got to have a date that it's due, right? And I'm being really generous, that's a whole week. Sit down and write out your personal testimony, your story. And oh, by the way, there's two different versions. There's the extended play. So if somebody has, you've got their attention for maybe 10 minutes. But then there's got to be the elevator story. If you've got two minutes with somebody, that means you've got to really hit it fast and furious. You can't, you can't take two minutes for the introduction. Because there's some people that are only going to give you two minutes. And so write it down. Go to your mirror. Practice. Record it and then watch it. It'll kill you a few times. It's like, ooh, I hate the sound of my voice. I look so dorky there. I look so weird there. Ah, have somebody critique it. I'm serious. Because you don't realize the power of your personal testimony. We got to get bold about this. They need to hear your story. Jesus is going to lead you to people who have a similar circumstance to what he delivered you from. He's going to pair you up with people that are going to relate to your story. And it's going to make a difference. So share your story. The second one is bold giving. Matter of fact, I wanted to stand up. Well, Brother Jeffrey was up here taking the offering tonight. And I would say, amen. Give boldly. Write the $151,000 check. We're all laughing, but I'm not really laughing. Because I believe in my God. And I believe in the people of God. And what Brother Jeffrey was saying when he was receiving that offering was, we need extravagant giving. People who will step out of their comfort zone and say, I know this is really bold. I know we can't afford it, but we're going to pray about it. And if Jesus doesn't stop us... We're writing the check. We're taking the money out of savings. We're doing whatever it means. We're selling something we don't have to have because we're all about the kingdom. Seek first the kingdom. I'm going to be bold with my giving about the kingdom, and God is going to do things that are going to blow our minds because every time you step out like that, Jesus takes notice. I could spend the rest of the night giving financial testimonies of times I took that step of faith. And most of the time, within 24 hours, Jesus Christ is already 10 times what I gave. Because he's just trying to tell me, I got you. It's not your money anyway. You're just a steward of my stuff. And so we got to give boldly. And by the way, in Acts chapter 4, I didn't read all the verses, but... The Bible says they had all things common. In other words, everybody was helping everybody. Is there a brother or sister in the church that's got a need? Well, we're going to rally together. We're going to meet that need. Because someday I'm going to be the guy that's in need, and I want the church to rally around me and take care of me. Does the church say amen? Because that's what was happening, and there was great blessings there because there were extravagant givers. And then number three is bold demonstration. What did Paul say? My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. So what does that mean, Brother Hughes? That means when you're talking to that person at Walmart, and they're telling you about something going on in their world that's not very good, that you just say, you know, we're going to agree together. And God's going to take care of that need. Why don't you just grab my hand right now, or whatever's appropriate, and we're going to pray, and we're going to believe Jesus is going to work it out right now, here in aisle 13 at Walmart. God is going to give you your miracle. I'm talking about bold demonstration. Where you, it doesn't matter. We're not trying to draw attention. Peter and John were not trying to draw attention. But the guy jumping around the church caused the attention 
And when you pray for that person and God does what you pray for, everybody's going to be paying attention. And you're going to have a platform to share the gospel when we operate in the Holy Ghost, when we operate in the gifts of the Spirit, when we're focused in a part of the five-fold ministry, God is going to do great and mighty things whenever, however, whoever. In Ponca, we love to just do prayer walks in our city. We go up and down the streets, and we didn't have a big sign. We're doing a prayer walk. Feel sorry for us. We didn't wear signs, Victory Worship Center. We just walked up and down the street, two by two, praying over the community, praying over that street, praying over each house. Lord, you know what's going on in the house. You know the people that live there. I pray for peace. I pray you do whatever it takes that they find salvation. That they're born again of water and spirit. And Lord, lead us to the people that we're supposed to talk to. I mean, God will do that if we ask him. Can I tell you that? And so pretty soon somebody's out in their front yard. Hey, we're friendly. Hey, how you doing? Good. Hey, what are you guys doing? You know what? We love this community. We love our city. We're just praying blessings and favor over the street. And we're praying a blessing and favor over your house. That God would show favor to you. We don't even tell them where we're from yet. Because that's not what it's all about. God's going to bless them. They're going to be asking soon enough where we're from. Do you know, I don't even know how many people got the Holy Ghost on their sidewalk. People who got healed on their front porch. People who God delivered in the middle of mowing their yard. What are you talking about? I'm talking about a bold demonstration because we are the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. Not just the people on the platform, the people out there, all of us together. Can I get a witness? And then last but not least, bold prayers. Hebrews 4.16, come boldly before the throne. And God's going to hear and answer prayer. You know, we pray pretty safe prayers. You don't have to say amen, it's okay. We pray pretty safe prayers. We pray possible prayers most of the time. I'm talking to myself. And most of the time, we don't step into those, that impossible side. But you know what? I happen to know your pastor has a God-sized vision for this church and this city. And a God-sized vision means it's going to take God to make it happen. Because all of us doing our very best is still not going to be enough. But we recognize when we start praying in the Holy Ghost, when we start calling those things that are not as though they already were, because we see it by faith, and we're declaring it, and we're expecting it, then God says, I like this. I like those bold prayers, and I'm going to answer. I'm going to give them a testimony. I'm going to inspire their faith. I want to show the world that I'm paying attention to what's going on. we got to declare things. There's a little saying my friend Steve Drury says, if you can't see it before you see it, you'll never see it. I know your pastor sees it. And I believe a lot of you see it. And if you can't, then pray, Jesus, before I walk out the door tonight, I want to see it. I want to see this place just jam-packed. I want to see this place multiple Sunday services, Saturday night services to take care of the crowds. I see it. It is the will of God. You don't have to wonder about it. You don't even have to pray and ask God. We know it's his will because he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I'm talking about boldness tonight. Kingdom boldness. Asking for God-sized miracles. Because my Bible tells me in Daniel eleven thirty two, 32, the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Exploits is not run-of-the-mill stuff. Exploits is not just the common norm. Exploits is way on the other extreme from that. It's stuff that's mind-blowing. It's stuff that everybody's going, 
Oh my goodness, that was, I don't even know what to say. It was so awesome. And so we've got to be bold because, do you know what's number one on the list of who won't be in heaven? Fear. We don't like to say that, but it's there in your Bible, Revelation 21 and 8. But the fearful. And then the list, I mean, it's hard to believe that fear is in the list with some really, really rank sense. But that's the word. And so if we're fearful tonight, tonight, why? What did Jesus tell his disciples? Why are you so fearful? I'm on the boat with you. Come on, this, this shouldn't be hard. And can I tell you, Jesus is on board the boat with us. He's navigating this journey. And so there's no reason for us to be fearful because he's given us power. He's given us authority to do great and mighty things in the kingdom of God. So I want you to stand tonight. Quick story and then I'll be done. In Ponca, we had outgrown our building, had a nice church building, a nice congregation. We were out of space. And so I'm walking around the property, doing prayer walks, telling Jesus, okay, Jesus, you called me to this city. I'm the pastor, and I'm clueless of what to do next. So you got to help me. And so we had... We thought we were going to build right there. We had had an architect draw plans, but it just didn't quite feel right. There was this big church right in the center of our city on the main street in town, and it came up for sale. It was two or three times what we could afford, so I didn't even think about looking at it because I am a mighty man of faith. But they lowered the price a little bit, and so for kicks... I thought, we'll look at that building. So I called our church board president, who had always thought our church needed to be there, by the way. I'm the man of God here, but, but you understand. And so I said, hey, how would you like to look at this church? Well, he was just thrilled. So we go to look at it. I'm not even serious looking at it. Again, I'm a mighty man of faith. So I'm just kind of got a lot of space, three times the size of what we got. Everybody drives by here. Thousands of cars pass every day. Lots of parking. More space than we need. So we walk out of the building. And my real estate lady says, um, how much do you want for your building? And I said, oh, Gene, we're just here kicking the tires. We haven't even had that conversation. And she said, I might have a buyer for your building. I'll send Wendy to look at your building tomorrow. It's like, okay. So the next day, Wendy comes and looks at our building. She represented a church that was looking for a new building. And within 60 days, we had sold our building for what we were asking for it. And it was never for sale. That's the God we serve. So we're all excited about it, and we're negotiating on the building that we had looked at. And they're playing hardball with us, and so I'm, every service, you know, I'm, I'm a PowerPoint kind of guy. And so I'm wearing the people out with PowerPoints. Okay, this is our current budget. This is how much we're currently paying for utilities. We're getting this building. It's three times the size, because I have faith that we're going to get it. So our payment's going to be this, and so this is how much we need to raise. And, you know, I'm, I'm crunching the numbers, and I'm standing there looking at the people, and I, truly I'm having this thought. It's like, you just might be the goat when this is all over with. And by the way, that doesn't mean greatest of all times either. Because it's like, okay, buddy, now you got yourself in a jam. They're coming to take your building, and you don't have a place to go. So I start, you know, talking to some of my friends from other churches in the community. You know, could we use your building on an afternoon? And so I think I've got it all lined up. And so I, I go to a wedding. And one of my really good friends who I thought was really a great man of faith. 
And I walk in, and he says, hey, Hughes, how you doing? I said, man, I'm doing great. You know, we sold our building. We've, we've got what we asked for. We never even put it for sale. And, you know, we're looking at this building, and we're negotiating. He said, bro, bro, wait a second. So you sold your building, and you don't have a building. Yeah, exactly, right. Bro, bro, bro. And I'm going, what? I don't think I'm getting it. But I was getting the message loud and clear. When the wedding was over, we got in the car and drove the hour back to our city. And I cried. Because I thought, I'm the guy, I teach finances. I teach stewardship. I mean, my background's in banking and finance. I have a degree in this. And everybody's going to think I'm a fool. Oh, my goodness. My reputation's going to be in shambles. And I was, I was crushed. It was terrible. And... So I went to bed that night just absolutely defeated. I wake up the next morning, it's Sunday. I'm trying to pray and get ready for church and the phone rings. And it's Sister Marilyn Chenault. Now Sister Chenault was a prophetess in our district. A mighty, I mean that's an understatement. Mighty, mighty, mighty woman of faith and woman of God. Somebody who talk to Jesus every day. I mean, like all day long. And she said, son, you have not made a mistake. Did you hear me? You have not made a mistake. Love you. Click. I fell on the floor in a puddle of tears. And as time progressed, we were able to buy the building we couldn't really afford it. I went to the bank, and I looked the banker in the eye, and I said, you're in the facts business. I'm in the faith business. Here's our reports. Here's our financials. We've never looked good on paper, though. But I assure you, if you'll loan us this boatload of money, we will take care of our business. And you know what he said? Rick, as long as you're pastor of that church, I will never look at these reports. Because I know if you're living and breathing, we're going to get our money. God blessed us. And I said all that to tell you about the rewards of taking that risk. Because God would blessed us with that building. And it was a wonderful building and still is for the pastor that's there today. The year that we bought the building... We had 335 first-time guests that year. The next year, our first year in the new building, we had 534 first-time guests. Almost twice as many guests. Why? Because we took a risk. We got out of our comfort zone way out there. The year we sold our building, we had 20, 20, 22 water baptisms in Jesus' name. The next year, our first year in the new building, we had 66 water baptisms in Jesus' name. Three times what we had had the year before. The year we sold the building, we had eight Holy Ghost baptisms. And the next year, we had 25 people baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, filled with the Holy Ghost. Why are you telling me that? I'm saying God blesses us when we get out of our comfort zone. When you get out there so far from the boat that you can't get back, God is going to be waiting for you there. And you'll be walking on the water to get to Jesus like Peter was. It's time for somebody tonight to get out of the boat. Get out of your comfort zone. It's time for somebody tonight to press through the crowd so you can touch the hem of his garment. It's time for somebody tonight to shake off the norm and say, I'm going bold for Jesus Christ. I'm going to practice kingdom boldness. Tonight I'm going to receive an impartation of boldness for the kingdom so Jesus knows who I am and I make a difference in my community. I wonder if you're here tonight and you want some kingdom boldness us. Would you step out of your seat? Would you make your way to this altar tonight and allow the Lord to baptize you with fresh kingdom boldness? Your city will never be the same. This church will never be the same. The lost people in this community will never be the same again. 
Come on, somebody, start praying some bold prayers tonight. Pull some things out of the impossibility category. What is in your life that's impossible? Begin to declare it tonight. I'm believing for that impossible healing. I'm believing for that impossible provision. I'm believing for that impossible deliverance. Come on, begin to speak it tonight. Begin to declare it. Come on, Christian Gross Center. I challenge you tonight. Go bold for Jesus. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God unto salvation. He said if we're ashamed of him, he's going to be ashamed of us. Come on, open up your spirit tonight. Create some space. Create a void inside you so he can fill you up with holy boldness, kingdom boldness. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, somebody, pray in the Holy Ghost tonight. Pray in the Spirit. Oh, come on. Jesus is doing something tonight. Oh, he's filling you up with what you're going to need to face the challenges tomorrow, the challenges of our culture. You're going to have to be bold. to release an impartation of boldness. If you want boldness, I want you to throw your hands in the air right now. Open up your palms right now. Create some space. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In Jesus' name, I release the spirit of boldness right now.
Just a few more minutes, God's doing special things. Come on, can you can you keep your mind on the Lord for just a few more minutes as God moves in this house? God touches. As God moves in people's spirit and in their life. While I was listening to Brother Hughes preach, my pastor texted me and he sent a picture of a young man that was just being inundated by the Holy Ghost. And you talked about the influence of our ministry, this church, influence and work is paying off. Trading in imposed future for a chosen one. Ensuring there is a future. That's the word from God that I received tonight. I've got two words tonight. Then I got a I got under conviction, so I started texting people I know. I know I shouldn't do that, but forgive me, Brother Hughes, because I got to win a soul. Don't tell me they're not hungry. You know, while I was praying, God began to talk to me 
Some of you used to be better witnesses when you were struggling financially than you are now that God has blessed you. What's going on? What's going on? What's happening? Don't you remember the Bible said, when I give you houses you didn't build and vineyards you didn't plant, then beware, lest thou forget the Lord God that brought you out of bondage. I don't want to forget. I don't care how much he blesses me. To me, the blessing is to carry the gospel even further than I've ever carried it before. It's not to hoard it up somewhere for some retirement plan. I'll tell you my retirement plan. My retirement plan is to go to heaven. I'm, I'm not talking about being foolish with money. I'm not talking about all that. I'm talking about that he put me in this world for one purpose. And that purpose is to lead as many people to God as I can lead into his kingdom. And I, I got under conviction, brother, brother James is bringing people he works with. And God's bless them, brother Matthew. We're so glad we baptized brother Matthew after some of you left Sunday night. Sister Susie is turning Olive Garden upside down. I want, I want to go, wh where are you from, sister? Is it no, Romania? I want to go to Romania and preach the gospel. But Romania has come to Pueblo and is preaching the gospel. So I thought, okay, God, who can I text? So I text this one individual, and I said, man, I have been gone ad nauseum. I haven't forgot about our Bible study. I've just been traveling ad nauseum. I'll be home next Tuesday. Maybe we can get together sometime then. I got an immediate response. I would love that, Pastor. You name the time and the place, and I'm there. Don't tell me there's no hungry people in this city. There's no hungry people because you're not seeing what God is seeing. But if we'll do what this man of God preached to us tonight and get a hold of boldness, there's hungry people that weren't delivered. How many of you are ready to kick this back into Pueblo style revival, P-Town revival? I'm about summer timed out. I'm ready to go back to work. How many of you are ready to go back to work? God bless you. Let's give God a high praise again. Kim would do that. Everybody, let's give him the praise that he's worthy of. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. By the way, Brother Jeffrey, that wasn't $90,000. On that Wednesday night with 55 people here in this church, we raised $390,000. That one night with 55 people. That's why you're standing in this church building. That's why we have 10 acres paid off. That's why we have Donna Cordova Gymnasium Center. Because people responded to the Holy